Welcome to our Global Village today. We have two great guests. Uh, we have Vince Hill, principal of the uh, Bassano School, and Brandon, who is the habitat coordinator in uh, southeast of Alberta. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brandon, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, my main base of operations is out of the Chamber of Commerce in Brooks. I'm the administrative assistant there. I'm also the uh, communication specialist for the Newell Regional Tourism Association and today I'm here to speak towards the Habitat for Humanity Southern Alberta Brooks chapter. Are you from within Alberta or you moved from somewhere else then? I'm originally from Ontario. I've been living in Alberta now for almost nine years. So you are qualified to be Albertan then? Some would argue that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Mr. Vince. Well, I've uh, only been here in Alberta for a year and, well, almost two years, I guess. Two years in August. Mm -hmm. uh, came from Saskatchewan before this, and, uh, but originally from New Brunswick. Oh, okay, so you've just been here a year? Just over a year here to Bassano. So I'm not an Albertan yet. Well, we can, that's, that's true. You still have three more years to go yeah. before you qualify. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about Habitat? Um, Habitat for Humanity is kind of a way of giving people in need a, not a helping hand, but a hand up. Um, we're able to assist in supplying basic needs for housing as far as um, building a suitable habitat for families in need. Um, it's, it's quite a simple application process and there's uh, three points that we touch on in order to qualify to partner with Habitat as a family. Mm -hmm. Um, first one, of course, is the need. We have to assess, is that need great enough that we're going to need to step in and assist these families in getting a place to live? Um, we look at uh, their ability to pay for their mortgage on the house and their willingness to partner with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we do have certain um, sweat equity requirements, so we do require a family to do uh, 500 sweat equity hours before they can receive the keys to their house. So would the... Uh 500 hours for the whole family or individual? Um, it depends on the dynamic of the family. If you have a, a two-parent household with your children, um, you're actually only required to do 300 of those hours, and the rest of that can be given out to family and friends to, uh, to help assist. If it's the reverse situation where you're dealing with a single-parent household, then the hours are reversed. They only have to do 200 hours and can get family and friends to do an additional 300. Wow. So is it in uh, Brooks only or also the whole count of Newell? It's, um, it is within the county of Newell, but we do require the, uh, the sweat equity hours to be performed within our, our chapter's region. Mm -hmm. So um, if, we're, if we're working in Brooks, we wouldn't be able to assist in Medicine Hat with their sweat equity hours. But the individual can have a volunteer hours from Bassano or... As long as it's within our, within the within our region. Newell yes. region. Okay. No, that's that's uh, that's good to know. Uh, Vince, you want to tell us the um, history of Bassano School and is it uh, grade from grade what to grade what? Well, we are grade uh, well kindergarten to grade twelve, okay. and right now we have about three hundred and twenty-three students. Um, we have seventy-three of those students from Siksika First Nation. And uh, that arrangement has probably been going on for about 40 plus years. Um, originally, like 40 some years ago, there may have been maybe three or four students that came. Um, there's been a time when there was more than 73. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently there was as many as 90 some here at one time. Wow. Um, but things have changed because of the, the schooling situation in the Siksika and so as a result they have uh, restricted in terms of how many people can actually come to our school and so we get 73 and we have a three-year agreement with them. We've, um, we typically get a lot of mostly uh, from farming and ranching uh, backgrounds for, for our school. There's um, with the uh, Synovus that's going on like there's Synovus we've got um, uh, Gentherm that's also in town as well too and so it's attracted a number of people to work in the area and as a result we have their students as well. So the cap from Sikh Sikh is 37 or 73? 73. 73. Yeah, 73. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So uh, not more than 73. 
Not more than 73, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I think that's, that's agreement for what, uh, in three years? It's a three year, we're now going into the third year again. Um, prior to this, they've always had year to year agreements, but um, uh, two years ago, they signed a, th a three year agreement. And so um, that's in place every three years now. Well, that's good. I think that's um, three years would be more effective than every year new. Yeah, yeah, that's sure. yeah, because that will uh, require all the time renew also. Three yeah. years at least will have less headache. Every three years will exactly. be easier. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, okay, how would uh, someone be qualified, for example, for Habitat uh, for Humanity? Would they be qualified based on their income and their ability to pay the mortgage? Do they have to pay a deposit or? or um, well, the way <coughs> the way the process works, um, it is a zero down payment, a zero percent interest on the mortgage, and it never goes above twenty five percent of your your household income. Um, the reason for that is to make sure that we can maintain within the thirty percent for housing, um, as far as family incomes go. You typically want to remain within 30% of your household income to ensure that you can continue to afford your housing. So we're able to hold the mortgages ourselves and we can ensure by doing that that those rates never increase. Um, as far as partnering with a family, we do look at the needs. So we have to do a home inspection of your current dwelling. We see um, a lot of the times where parents are sharing rooms with their children because they just simply don't have enough bedrooms for everybody in the house. Um, on top of that, we also look at their willingness to, to partner. So as long as they're able to commit to the 500 sweat equity hours, they're able to commit to being able to maintain a 25% household income mortgage, and we see the need, then we will qualify you for a Habitat. And what will happen if they uh, choose to move out tomorrow, or what will happen if they choose to go somewhere else? It depends on the length of time that they've been in the dwelling. Of course, we would re we would request a minimum of five years within the dwelling before vacating or, or selling it back. Habitat for Humanity always requests first right of refusal to purchase a dwelling back, um, back, to, back into the habitat, in which case we will uh, refurbish it and, um, and get it back out for a resale within the same terms. Uh, we have recently just partnered with a, a single parent family and um, this mother and two children for what would normally take a one to two year process to complete the sweat equity hours and everything else involved. Uh, of course, there's usually a dwelling build within that time and we had this one available. This family has nearly completed all 500 sweat equity hours within a record breaking three months. Wow. And where are they going to volunteer, for example, food bank and this area? Habitat for Humanity will essentially accept any community involvement as a sweat equity hour. Um, myself with our, our Brooks Trade Show, we had uh, the family come in with a bunch of their friends and they knocked off 187 sweat equity hours in one weekend alone. So basically any community involvement type activity, be it um, volunteering with Brooks Animal Protection Society or in the hospital or any other, um, any other community involvement type activity, we're going to accept that as a sweat equity hour. It even includes things as, um, as the families in refurbishing the house, getting it ready for themselves to move in, we're counting those hours towards sweat equity as well. And they can bring their friends to work on their behalf, so you will add those hours also? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a... Uh, so how would the community be able to help such noble uh, cause? We are, um, as I've mentioned, we are recently partnered with a family. So once we can get them moved into their home, uh, we do plan on breaking ground on a new dwelling in Brooks uh, in 2017. Um, typically what we look at for fundraising is, uh, we say 250000 per door. We do build uh, duplexes for the most part, so we're looking at, uh, at a total of about $500,000 um, that we need to raise. So we are looking for, um, for donations and sponsorships, uh, anybody who's willing to help out uh, specifically with the build, anybody who has skills and things that could be used towards um, sweat equity. Habitat for Humanity also maintains businesses called the, uh, the Habitat Restore, where it is a retail outlet. You can donate and you can purchase uh, gently used items 
for your own houses or um, for your own purposes and it's all uh, it all goes to help the individual chapters wow uh, mr vince do, do you have any other programs within this school yeah we got uh, quite a few different uh, programs that are going on in the school um i mean starting off with the video program mm -hmm. that's you know we're here now in the studio right now that yeah. was uh grassland school division we applied for a um a grant basically from their capital monies or capital projects to actually refurbish this this facility here so that we can have a dedicated media room basically and um so what's happened we have we have a lot of really good equipment we have um, you know, three big cameras that we use on a regular basis. Of course, lots of lighting that we use. Um, and we've got a TriCaster now where we can actually do our own um, broadcasting as well and stream them out into YouTube or whatever if we want to do programs, and which we'll start doing that fairly, fairly soon as once this studio is actually finished completely, we'll get the kids in here and actually they'll set up, you know, the tables and booths and we'll broadcast little events and that for them as well so they get some experience with using this in addition to that our kids are all our students are also working with the Brooks Bandits as well and what we're uh, that's nice because they get to work on the cameras there and do the um, um, the actual mixing on the TriCasters there for the big jumbotron that they had for the hockey games and so it's great experience for them as well too so that and some of these you know, the students are actually working here right now for this event as well too so um, in addition to that we have a, a very strong sport program um, and our students are competing all over um, for things as well too different areas in volleyball and basketball and, and do well on track and field uh, we also have um, um, just down the hallway as well we have a art room which has a full kiln as well and so kids can do pottery as well too uh, so art wow. is a big a big piece here for us uh, music as well we've got a we do a lot with music we've taken kids to provincials a couple times and and they performed very well uh, so there's lots of we try to one of the things here because we're in a rural sit, uh, scenario and situation it's really important that we try to provide as many offerings um, as possible for students to be able to get them here instead of thinking that the only place they can go is go to the city and and you know go to a bigger school or whatever we need them to stay here in the community uh, so we all we all also offer um, you know the RAP program which is the work experience we also offer the green certificate which they get to work with somebody in cattle industry horsing horse or sheep or whatever so they can do that kind of stuff so we we try to appeal to a broad spectrum of kids as well. Then we bring the CTS trailer in, and uh, so we have that uh, for half a year. Mm -hmm. And we do uh, welding and we do woodwork and small mechanics as well in that program as well too. So they have that uh, for half a year as well. Wow, uh, not to mention also they, were, uh, they did a very well, uh, good job with the rodeo last year. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, they did. We also have one other program. We have um, we have this Bronco Bronco Bob or Bill or whatever they call them, but we have a simulator that is actually uh, is used in a lot of hospitals or yeah. for training as well. So it's that was donated to the school by Synovus. It's an eighty thousand dollar simulator, and wow. um, so it's sitting down the hallway as well. So we do. We now have partnered up with uh, Medicine Hat College for the healthcare aid program. Mm -hmm. And so they'll be using that simulator as part of their training initiatives as well too. So wow. that's been handy. No, oh, that's 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 great. Uh, and I saw that one I think last time when I was here. It's it's a great piece of uh, uh, thing. The um, I understand also the Bassani School also compete uh, Medicine Hat College. Uh, you want to share with us the success story? Yeah, we took five students down to the recent uh, Alberta Skills and. Um, Four of the students were in the uh, video TV uh, production, yeah. and one was in welding. Mm -hmm. And all five of the students came back with medals, uh, which we were very pleased with. Our uh, welding came back with gold, and then we had on our t video and TV, they had silver and bronze. 
Uh, we were only one point off uh, from getting the gold on the video, so wow. felt really good about that. Wow, so you get silver then? We got silver on that, yeah. Next year we'll get gold. Wow. That's, that's great, uh, silver, gold, as long as they win something. That's, that shows that appreciation for. So are they going to be heading to the... Uh, well, they would have. They would have gone up to Edmonton, but the Fort McMurray fires happened, and so they canceled the Alberta skills for the province, and they did a lottery draw. And uh, so uh, names uh, were t put into a lottery, and our gold medalist winner was the only one that they would put in the lottery for the welding. He came in fourth out of the province for welding. Uh, so if he'd been selected as the first one, one or two, he would have been going to uh, New Brunswick for the, for the Canadian uh, championship. But anyways, wow. we, uh, next year, we'll hopefully there would be no fires in Fort Mac and get a chance to compete. So they canceled the whole thing this year then? They did. The whole, the whole thing was canceled. And wow. then just, I understand that because yeah. we brought so many people down from north. And yeah, to Edmonton to, and all yeah. that. And there was some uh, um, emergency situation yeah, from uh, for Fort sure. Mac. Yeah, so that's... Uh, yeah, uh, just to add that to uh, Brandon, Brooks being a diverse population, and you came from Ontario, which has a lot diverse population also. Uh, what do you think the um, advantage of a diverse population or diverse community such as Brooks or County of New York in the 21st century economic development? It's uh, it's certainly a learning experience, that's for sure. Um, having, I believe Brooks has about 136 individual cultures. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, the more people you meet, the more you tend to, to learn about global initiatives and, and what happens in certain parts of the world. Um, it was certainly an eye-opener for me when I arrived in Brooks and um, it, it's been a very rewarding experience at the same time. Um, as far as the uh, the economic diversity goes, it's certainly a fantastic way to find out what other corners of the world are doing to make things work for themselves, mm -hmm. and uh, and how can we learn from that and incorporate it into our our own area, our own region, and and try to improve upon or expand on those, and create opportunities for everybody, regardless of where they may have come from in the world. Oh, that's good. You came from a town just far from Toronto, two hours. I came from a small town in um, in Muskoka, Ontario, called Gravenhurst, and when I lived there, it was about fourteen thousand people. Wow! Um, I same believe as Brooks, then. same as Brooks, yes. Um, with it being a very highly tourist type area, a lot of cottagers uh, go there in the summer. The uh, the population tends to triple. Wow! It, it can be a very congested small town. Oh, but you don't. Do you had the same uh, diverse population? similar to Brooks Definite, area? Definitely not. No, the, um, the region um, that I'm from is uh, pr uh, predominantly Caucasian. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we're dealing with a lot of people who have been in the area for, for generations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's not, there isn't a huge draw for people of other ethnicities in the area. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's mostly a tourism base, um, base facility, or sorry, based region. So there's there are tourists of other ethnic ethnic groups that do come in, but yeah. it's not uh, not anything like you would see here in here in Brooks. In Brooks, okay. No, that's that's uh, that's. Uh, very what do you think? The same thing. Uh, the importance of you came from New Brunswick, which I believe is has a it's a diverse state or province. Uh, what do you think the uh, advantage of having a diverse population is in 21st century? I think it's really critical that we uh, that we embrace that. I think that's the the way things are going to be in the f future. Um, I mean, I came. I, it's been it's been some years now since I've left New Brunswick, and I was in Saskatchewan for about twenty some years. Uh, I've worked primarily in in native context and First Nations world, uh, and 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 that's interesting because, like, in Saskatchewan, we probably have. Well, there's, they're projecting that in 2021 or 22, that that probably 30 percent of the population will be um, um, the population will be um, uh, First Nations within Saskatchewan as well. So I think that 
in, in Alberta, we don't see as many First Nations people because we have more people coming into Edmonton and Calgary and, and so forth as well. Yeah. Uh, but I think that we're, we're trying to recognize that here in Bassano. If you come into our school, we have the flex area and we've, we've put the flags up representing the various countries of kids that have, uh, you know, where they, where they come from. So we've got kids that are here from Mexico and, and primarily when we think of that, they're the Mexican Mennonites that are coming yeah. up yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, we've got kids from the Philippines. We've got students from Korea. Uh, we've got kids from, um, uh, we have recognized our Siksika with the flag there. We've got our Métis kids as well. Of course, kids from the United States that have come here as well. Uh, and I think I'm missing somebody as well. But I know that our, we've got a doctor that's coming here from Nigeria. And so yeah. we've got a flag that we just purchased. And when the kids show up, we'll put the flag up with them as well. And, and people are very comfortable. They've come here uh, originally from their, uh, you know, Maybe they came from the States or they came from Ireland or yeah. wherever mm -hmm. and they homesteaded and they've, there's a sense of, you know, they've been here and their family's been here for five generations and they feel that connectedness to the land. Yeah. And uh, you do find that there's maybe a, um, a, a bit of an estrangement, yeah. almost like when they, more people are coming in from other countries, yeah. you know, and new Canadians and they're feeling a little bit of how do we, how do we adapt and adjust to this? Mm -hmm. So it's a learning process and I think at the school we have a really important role to ensure that we embrace culture. And you know, we've emb been embracing the culture from Siksika for over 40 some years. It's time for us now to start embracing the other cultures that are moving into Bassano and, and living in our communities and recognize those as well. And so it's really an important piece that we really, we work with. I think that's uh, that's uh, well said. I think um, met with uh, a gentleman who happened to be Caucasian, and one of the things he mentioned, he said, "You know, bun bunch of the immigrants coming here, uh, they go to JBS or Lakeside, and they don't pay tax." And I said, "No, no, 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 no. You get that thing wrong information." I said, "No, everybody pays tax." And I said, "Don't listen from me. Just go to Revenue Canada, click, and see who's exempted from." And he came back after one day, two days. He said, that was my ignorance part. He said, I'm sorry. And I said, that's, you know, that's a good thing for you to come back and tell me because uh, someone told him mm -hmm. and he believed it. Well, I, I think that's an important thing that I had a conversation with somebody just in fact about last Friday about, uh, and, and let me speak about the First Nations component as well. I hear time and time and time again, people yeah. saying, oh, those First Nations people don't pay taxes. I'm a little, maybe a little sensitive to the topic because yeah. my dad's Mohawk and I grew up in a reserve yeah. and before I, you know, my mom's white, of course, yeah. but, you know, so we, you know, the, the thing about it, so I have that native heritage yeah. component, but so anyways, people say oh, those native people, they don't pay taxes, you know, and they're, they get everything for free and everything. And it's my tax money that's yeah. going to the, you know, that's not true. Yeah. The, the, the reality is, is not one cent of money that goes to First Nations people comes from people who are paying taxes. Mm -hmm. And somebody like myself who's working off reserve, I'm paying taxes just like yeah. anybody else. Yeah. But if you work on reserve, that's different. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is that money that goes towards our First Nations does not come from income tax. It comes from revenues that are generated from resources. It comes from oil and gas and from forestry and from mining and from the land. It comes, that's where the money goes. So they get a portion because of the treaties that were signed. Okay. They get a portion of that money that goes to them basically as a royalty revenue for First Nations because of the treaties. So it's not income tax money. It comes directly from resources. Well, that's also I open it for myself because that's first. I thought uh, the same thing with uh, what no. you, and that's that's what you call learning process and life is learning. And that's thank you. That's that's something that uh, I have learned from you today. Uh, have, did you know that before? I did actually. Okay, okay, no, that's good. So it comes from the from the natural resources and it all comes that from stuff. The land, okay, yeah. not from the income tax that no. people pay tax. That's okay. So that's it's fr it comes from resources and uh, renewable energy energy resources. Okay. That's that's the department that it comes yeah. from. Yeah. All I know was because if, if you are off the reserve area, you pay tax. If you are there, you don't pay tax. That's the fact. Yeah, is of, of yeah. But the problem is people listen other people, their right. rumors. They, without verifying, they will run with it and they will tell you, you know, this mm -hmm. is. So they believe in us a true. 
until they find otherwise. So it's just here. Well, I, I took my, uh, my son-in-law and my son yesterday because we had graduation this past weekend and I took them. They're from, one's living up in Spruce Grove and one's living in Prince Albert. And it's interesting because we went to uh, Brooks and we went into No Frills. And they both commented about it was a cultural experience going into No Frills. Yeah. Because there was some, such a variety of people there, and it was, and I said, yeah, it's multicultural, very much so. No, that's 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 the value of of being multicultural, learning from different culture, and that's the beauty, and that's the embracement of uh, to embrace that culture. I think from everybody, mm -hmm. you learn everything, every day. The amazing thing too is coming from Ontario, and I'm sure from New Brunswick as well. The day I landed in Alberta was a huge culture shock for me. We don't realize as, as born Canadians how different we can be from one side of the country to the next. Well, because in New Brunswick, it's, it's bilingual. It's French-English. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah. so it's expected. And in Ontario, it really depends on what part of Ontario you're in. Ver are you going to have a bilingual requirement or are you going to be strictly English, strictly French? Yeah. It, it really depends on where you are. I mean, Ontario is a big place. There's a lot of people there. And what would you like final note to, to say to our viewers in terms of volunteerism? Um, Keep an eye out on our website. We're always looking for volunteers for, for one reason or another. Um, definitely we're going to have a huge demand for volunteers when we come up to, uh, to the build. A lot of the times we can't actually accept a, any volunteerism until the walls are up at least. We have to make sure we have the skilled labor for that. Um, but any donations, sponsorships, um, sweat equity hours that may, may be filling for a family in need kind of thing. Um, our, our website, uh, www.habitatforhumanity.com, it's uh, going to give you all the information required. Um, and on a side note of that as well, uh, we also have a global program for Habitat for Humanity, a global build program, which coincidentally we call Global Village. That's great to hear that. That's mm -hmm. good. Um, how would you like to have, what's, how we encourage the parents to involve their kids in uh, the school? In the school, I, you know, I think that the important thing that we're trying to do within the community is that we're working with our mayor and council. We're trying to attract more people into Bassano. Yeah. Uh, we need to keep our numbers up within our community for school. Okay. Um, we want to continue to offer the programming that we have and we need the numbers to be able to, to support that. So. Bassano is a good place to live and a good place to, you know, to settle into. And um, I, I, I see a lot of good things happening here. And what's your final note to the students uh, not to drop school off? You know, we don't really have a lot of students that are dropping out of school. Yeah. Um, and I think there not was in Bassano. In Bassano, in, in, in the general. Whole region, yeah. I, you know, I, I mean, the big, the message that I would like to say to to any student is is learning isn't just restricted and limited to school. It's about it's. A, before school, after school, and you know, and when, so, but school is important. It's important to learn the skills that we're trying to teach here, uh, that will prepare them into adulthood. And it's, I, we just say, you know, we want to be a school that is really relevant and, and connecting with students, engaging, so that students find it exciting and, and fun to come to school and learn. So, we have to do our part um, and to make a, a, do a better job for students to enjoy and, and actually be successful. That's well said, and I think uh, school is important, education is important, and Grassland is doing great, I think, to achieve that, and um, you guys are doing a noble job. Uh, thank you very much for both of you coming to Global Village, and uh, it's glad to hear that you also have Global Village, so uh, that's a trademark from Global Village, so we'll just give it to you, no problem. You just pay us sometime in the future. But anyway, thank you very much for coming to the program. And we hope to see you again. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vince, for everything that you do for the students. I think it's uh, great to be in Bassano. I've been here many times. I'm loving the area. I might just move to Bassano very soon. There you soon. go. There you go. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, this is the end of uh, Global Village Program. This is your host, Ahmed Kasim.